Hello and welcome to If You Love This Planet. My special guest today on the show is S. David Freeman. Mr. Freeman has served as an advisor on energy and the environment to Presidents Johnson, Nixon and Carter. He has a 30-year record as a board member and manager of many of America's largest publicly owned businesses. President Jimmy Carter appointed him as chairman of the Tennessee Valley Authority in 1977, where he cut sulfur dioxide emissions in half, stopped construction of eight large nuclear power plants, and pioneered a massive energy conservation program. David Freeman was also Deputy Mayor of Los Angeles for Energy and the Environment, and he's won awards from the Los Angeles Coalition for Clean Air, National Wildlife Association, Global Green, and many other organizations for his devotion to clean air, clean water, and renewable energy. David Freeman, welcome to If You Love This Planet. Well, it's a pleasure to hear your voice and... uh be in uh, at least voice contact with you. Yes, Dave. Um, I want to remind you in the audience how we met. I set up a symposium, oh, I don't know, about eight years ago in Washington, D.C., called Global Warming and Nuclear Power, and you were one of the invited speakers, and we had for two days discussions um, from people on both sides of the issues. Yes, nuclear power is good. It stops global warming to no nuclear power is no good, and that terrible consequences of global warming and I remember you stood up at the end with your typical southern accent and said we can have all the energy we need in America by 2050 with no coal no CO2 and no nuclear and I said you must be kidding Dave and you said no I'm serious and I thought my god this can't be for real so then I raised the necessary funds and employed your devotee, Arjun Makajani, to do the study called Carbon Free Nuclear Free, which has become an absolute classic for the future of the United States. Would you like to comment on your statement at that time and how things have played out since then, Dave Freeman? Yeah, well, I think the, you've described it fairly accurately. Unfortunately, Arjun's book, is a classic, but not the policy of the United States of America or any other country right now. So uh, we still have a work in progress. Uh, We've shown that it can be done. What is lacking is the will to make it happen thus far. And and I think that uh, we have to not kid ourselves. The, uh, the oil and gas industry seems to be winning the fight at the moment. Uh, the the people on Earth uh, are losing, and uh, and I'm an optimist. I think that we uh, we have developed the technology. We know the policies, uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, the petroleum industry uh, by amassing such huge quantities of wealth have now developed the technology where they can drill anywhere at any depth, and extract uh, petroleum from the earth uh, and charge enough money to pay for it. So uh, I view the the last 10 years as uh, we've been talking green, uh, we've been going brown, and carbon continues to uh, increase worldwide, uh, 3% this year over last year. We have all these grand uh, programs for doing X by 2030 and that by 2050, but in 2012, uh, we're losing this fight uh, to the oil and gas uh, and coal people, and uh, and I, I my problem is that I'm not sure that everyone in the environmental movement uh, understands that we're getting the stuffings beat out of us, uh, and and I'm trying in in my 80s to try to instill a sense of urgency and passion in a movement that seems to, in America, to have tired blood. Tired blood, that's a good good term, tired blood. Yes, I don't know what happens to people, whether they sort of slip into despondency and depression or practice some form of psychic numbing or when they get to Washington with the NGOs, they sort of start drinking cocktails with the 
DOE and with the State Department slip into the sort of Beltway Bandit type thinking and and lose perspective, lose the passion, lose the urgency which you so uh, so display. Um, I feel exactly like you do because I, of course I'm a physician and I just always think of the planet as a patient and it, it is indeed in the intensive care unit and after I interview you I'm going to interview a group of scientists who've just written a paper in Nature magazine saying that things are much, much more severe than they originally thought in terms of global warming and species extinction and the like and indeed, some of them even admit in interviews that they're, 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 really, they're really, really scared. So for a scientist to say that they're scared, things are getting really grim, aren't they? Well, let me tell you what is uh, cruelly ironic. The greater the evidence is uh, that, that climate change is already having an impact, it, the less we seem to care about it. Here, and I'm speaking about America, I don't really know about Australia or other countries, but we now have clear evidence that the ice is melting. It's melting to the extent that there's now a new northwest passage where ships can travel in the summer where they never have been able to for hundreds of years. And the whole Arctic is now open, and guess what? who's about to take advantage of it? The oil and gas people. They found huge quantities of petroleum up there. So the irony is that global warming is melting the ice. The, mel the ice gone is uncovering huge new quantities of petroleum. They charge so much for oil that they have the money to, and the technology to develop it. And we keep uh, putting a, a solar panel on a house now and then. And, and, uh, and the carbon globally is going up, up, up when it should be going down, 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 and uh, in the world seems to be an avoidance behavior. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I don't, uh, I'm trying as best I can. I've moved to Washington, D.C., and uh, getting a few people here. Uh, the one organization that seems to still uh, have fresh blood, not tired blood, is Friends of the Earth, and I'm working with them, and we're now... Uh, seriously involved in trying to keep one troubled nuclear power plant shut down the San Onofre plant in Southern California as an example. We figure if we can win that fight, maybe uh, we'll reinvigorate the whole anti-nuclear movement, which should be everyone on Earth, But uh, and you have to keep fighting. But it, it is really ironic that the more we learn uh, that the science of climate change is uh, very much on target, uh, that we, we seem to ignore it more. Yeah. I mean, there was a greater support for doing something about climate five, six years ago when, when Al Gore was making all of his speeches than there is today. Yeah, it reminds me of a cancer patient. You know, when you tell someone they've got cancer and, and you know, it's terminal and they might have, may have six months to live, people respond in, in a variety of ways. Some take it on, they go through their stages of grief, shock and disbelief and then depression and finally adjustment if they have time to do so psychologically. And others totally practice denial. They, do, they don't face it at all. They won't talk about it. They won't talk about dying. And so that's a minority of people. But I think that the majority of humanity at the moment is in that phase. The, oh, yeah. The more severe it is, the less they want to talk about it. Now, is there any way, Dave, that you can get to President Obama? Uh, you know, uh, I, I just feel that he is a man whose uh, interest in uh, politics in the smallest sense of the word uh, is overwhelming. I, I don't have the, you know, he is the opposite of Lyndon Johnson. Lyndon Johnson had real passion, and he stuck his neck out for the things that he believed in. One of them was terribly bad, the Vietnam War. Others were quite good, the Civil Rights Movement. But he stuck his neck out and got 
deeply personally involved in passing legislation. Uh, Obama seems to me more like the professor in chief, the real cool cat that is just not going to get his own hands real dirty over anything. But can't I mean, you, I hope I'm I hope I'm wrong if he wins in his second term. But thus far, uh, if he if George W. Bush had done the things on the environment that Obama's done, uh, hopefully the movement would have been out in the streets yelling and screaming. Uh, but he has uh, come out for the oil industry's energy program, all of the above. Uh, he is uh, publicly rebuked the head of the EPA by ordering her to withdraw a rule on smog that she uh, worked on for, the EPA had worked on for 20 years, uh, and he has ignored uh, the largest uh, oil spill in our history and the largest nuclear catastrophe on Earth. And he's for nuclear power, and he's now uh, have the Interior Department just handing out permits like they were Valentine's for oil drilling. Yeah. So, uh, well, you uh, you work, but but I but but let me let me just shift a little bit. All right. While while all that is are is factually true, uh, we have in fact developed the technology that can enable us to become nuclear free and, and carbon free, namely the solar and wind technologies and the ability to store power has advanced tremendously. The, the, the problem uh, is that we just don't seem to have the political willpower to fight for it. But the cost of solar panels has just gone down, uh, you know, tenfold. Uh, it, it's now within the range of being economic on the basis of market prices that don't internalize the external costs even. And the wind power, you know, on a day in Texas on March, in March of this year, 23% of all the electricity was generated from wind power. Hmm. So, so, you know, in Texas, not California, in Texas. Uh, so, you know, the technology is there. Uh, we just don't seem to uh, embrace a sustainable future. We talk about it. Uh, I think the the greenwashing is the fastest growing industry in the last 10 years. Yeah. As I say, we have talked green, uh, but, but, but we're going brown. Uh, I hate to put it that bluntly, uh, but people need to know that. And the environmental movement, uh, with the exception of Friends of the Earth, in my view, died and didn't even bother to have a funeral. <laughs> what about NRDC? They they usually spot on on many things. No, they, they, they no 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 no. They they uh, the problem with these organizations is they have acquired tunnel vision. Uh, the environmental mm-hmm. community used to be a community. In fact, uh, people in America used to live in communities. Now we live in splendid isolation, and I think. If you peel off enough layers, the problem is that in the decade after World War II even, the lingering impacts of the Depression and the feeling of togetherness that we acquired during World War II spilled over for a couple of decades, and we were a community, and people cared about each other and and cared about the things that we could do together. Yeah. Uh, But but now uh, the people in America view themselves in, as individuals. They've acquired a, an enormous degree of, of uh, materialistic affluence, and uh, there's a big element of victim mentality in people's heads, and, and basically it's all about how many pairs of shoes you own and uh, how many cars and how many things you have, and it's, it's self-oriented so that uh, people are not instinctively reaching out 